of those events has an opportunity to change the chemistry of your body, bringing it toward health. Interesting point, uh, Dean Ornish, uh, uh, physician in San Francisco, a uh, wonderful study. He worked with prostate cancer patients. What he did is he split his patients into two groups. Uh, before the 90-day experiment, they read the genetics of both populations. And then one group got regular conventional pharmaceutical treatment. The second group was the experimental group. And what did he do? He taught them stress reduction techniques. He taught them how to meditate. And he taught them how to have a better diet. And so for 90 days, one group got regular treatment. The other got the special meditation and diet change. Uh, and after 90 days, they read the genes of both groups. The group that got the conventional treatment, the genes essentially stayed the same as they were for 90 days. But the group that changed lifestyle, 500 genes changed their function in 90 days. Most of the genes were contributing to the cancer. So basically it said, uh, what was the power of this? And the power was this, just changing lifestyle, just changing diet, rewrote the genetics of that individual and took them toward health. So basically it says you don't need to do all kinds of, you know, hard things like change your chemistry and get injections and do all kinds of physical manipulation. Start with the mind. The mind is the ultimate control. And you say, oh, the mind controls biology? I go, biology has been telling us for a hundred years about the power of the mind. It's called the placebo effect. And the placebo effect is, oh, here's this powerful drug that can cure, it, this powerful drug can cure your, your disease. And, and, and the person says, oh, oh, oh why, that's the one I want. Take the drug, get better, find out the drug was a sugar pill. The point was, and what cured the disease of that individual? And the answer was, not the pill. What cured the disease was the belief that the pill was going to cure the disease. So the belief I'm going to get cured led to the cure. Now people understand that and they go, yes, I understand placebo effect as positive thinking. I go, well, that's actually what it is, positive result. What I need people to understand more importantly is this. We don't talk about what is the concept of negative thinking. I go, oh. Negative thinking is equally powerful in controlling your biology as positive thinking, but it works in the opposite direction. While a positive thinking placebo effect can cure you of any disease, a negative belief called the nocebo effect can cause any disease. You can create any disease with a belief. And the relevance about that is we never talk about the negative beliefs. And then I find out from psychologists that 70% or more of our thoughts are negative and disempowering and redundant, same beliefs. And it says then all day long, you are disempowering yourself with your belief, the nocebo effect. And since nobody's really aware of the nocebo effect, I think it's time for them to wake up and recognize, yeah, yeah, I know the positive thinking is very important, but boy, you should emphasize negative thinking is equally powerful, but it's profoundly different. It's a revolution. When I say genetics, or specifically when I say genetic control, which is a conventional belief, genetic control literally means control by genes. Uh, and this is the belief that your heredity is going to control your life. The new science is called epigenetics. It sounds like almost the same, but the prefix epi is the revolution. Epi means above. So when I say epigenetic control, I'm literally saying control above the genes. This is the revolution. If genes control your life and you don't control your genes, by definition, you're a victim. But in epigenetics, your mind and your environment are what control your genes. And since you're the one that can regulate your mind and change your environment, then we are not victims. We are masters. We can change any of these things and alter our genetics. So this is the revolution. In the first seven years, we start to identify uh, how life works and who controls what. Uh, if you go back to an average family, when someone's sick in the family, they say, oh, Billy's sick, we have to take Billy to the doctor. Mommy's sick, she has to go to the doctor. An infant in the first seven years is learning what? If it's a health issue, 
you don't take care of it yourself. You have to go to the doctor to take care of it. So you're abdicating control over your health and putting it on the shoulders of the doctor. So whatever the doctor's opinion is becomes your truth. So a diagnosis is not just a diagnosis. A diagnosis is actually planning your future. If this is what you expect according to the diagnosis and you have a belief that the doctor is the professional who knows all this stuff, then that belief is trans translated by your mind into the biology. And this is why if a doctor tells a patient, I'm sorry, you have three months left to live, that patient generally lives about three months and then dies. Was it because they had to die at three months? Or more importantly, was it because the date was set and therefore the biology is conforming to a program that already occurs. This is what we have to begin to understand that when we buy professional opinion, then our mind takes their opinion and then tries to create reality based on that opinion. And therefore, you have given up power over your life and these diagnoses without giving benefit to the, to the patient <laughs> where they can change it. Uh, it's unfortunate because they use the catchphrase, we don't want to give false hope to the patient. And I say, well, the problem is this, then these diagnoses actually offer no hope to the patient because you're not saying that you don't have to have this fate. You are telling this is what the fate is and this unfolds. So, for example, Angelina Jolie, uh, her mother and her grandmother died with the breast cancer uh, BRCA1 gene. And she apparently had that gene. So to avoid that future cancer, she uh, has a double mastectomy, as if, okay, if I remove my breast, I will not get breast cancer. That's not true, actually. Uh, but the fact was this. Uh, it was a belief based on the fact that the BRCA1 gene causes cancer. I, I need to correct this right now. The BRCA1 gene does not cause cancer. Why? 50% of the women that have the gene never get the cancer. Well, the point is very critical. It says 50% of the women with this gene don't get cancer. Then the gene is not causing the cancer. Uh, and, and why is this as relevant is because when people buy into the belief that the gene causes cancer and then are told they have the gene, then the belief system is going to say, oh, my God, I'm open to the cancer. And now I'm a victim of the cancer. OK, this is, is an unfortunate situation because it's still the belief system. What science hasn't studied is how come 50 percent of the women with that gene don't get the cancer? They don't study that. That's the part you really want to study because that's the part that says it's not the gene that does that. There is a problem uh, with uh, the understanding of our conventional genetics, and it deals with these two words that get confused. The two words are causation and correlation. They're not the same. Causation is the act that produces something. Correlation means it's connected with something. There is no cancer gene. That's a fact. Meaning there is no gene. You have this gene. You're going to get cancer.